If you're looking to evaluate a multifamily deal, super quick, those are the 11 things that I look at. Purchase price, rehab, all in, current NOI, current cap rate, stabilized NOI, stabilized cap rate, stabilized bank comp cap rate, makes sense. Stabilized value, number of units, A, B, or C market, A, B, or C property. Those are the things we look at. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. Josh Cantwell. If you love entrepreneurship and investing in real estate, then you are in the right place. Josh is the CEO of Freeland Ventures Real Estate Private Equity and has personally invested in well over 500 properties all across the country. He's also made hundreds of private lender loans and owns over 1,000 units of apartments. Josh is an expert at raising private money for deals, and he prides himself on never having had a boss in his entire adult life. Josh and his team also mentor investors and entrepreneurs from all over the world. He doesn't dream about doing deals. He actually does them, and so do his listeners and students. Now sit back, listen, listen learn, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So hey, welcome back to Accelerated Investor. Uh, got a question come in from one of our members um, and also my acquisitions manager, my VP of business development, Tyler Brummett. He and I had been talking about how do we evaluate a commercial deal, a multifamily deal in seconds? Like what exactly is the questions that we wanna ask and the numbers that we need in order to quickly evaluate a deal um, and do it super fast because we get a lot of inquiries, we get a lot of opportunities, a lot of deal flow that comes across our desk, and we wanna make sure that we can evaluate deals in seconds and be like, hey, like this is a deal, or this is definitely not a deal, or this is a deal that we might wanna ask more questions about. And what we've boiled it down to is basically 11 things, 11 questions, 11 numbers that we need to know uh, or at least have a general idea about in order to quickly, meaning super fast, in 30 seconds or less, evaluate a multifamily or a commercial deal. So let me walk you through these. Write these down. If anybody ever says, hey, you know, I have a, I have a multifamily deal for you to invest in, these are the questions that you want to ask yourself. And also, if you ever bring me a deal, if you ever want to joint venture on a deal or you need funding for a deal, whether it's debt or equity, or you want to joint venture on a deal, we partner. These are the questions that I'm going to ask you on your multifamily deal. So real simple. I'm going to read through these, one through 11, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk a little bit more about each one in a second. So uh, real easy. Number one is what's the expected purchase price? or the contracted purchase price. Number two, what's the expected rehab or the verified rehab? Number three, what's your all-in number? All-in is gonna be purchase price plus renovations plus some soft costs. So, you know, soft costs for title and lender fees and appraisal fees and stuff like that, soft costs. What's the current gross operating income? and the current expenses, and the current net operating income. I kind of put those all in one question. The current financials, if you will. Current gross, current expenses, current net, that's number four. Number five, what's the current cap rate? And to get the current cap rate, all we do is we take our all in number and divide that into the current net operating income. Okay, understand that most of the time we're gonna have an opportunity to do value add and increase the rent, it's gonna increase the net operating income. So what is the current cap rate is that division of all in into current net operating income. Uh, next number six is the stabilized net operating income. What's the projected or expected or you know estimated future stabilized net operating income um, based on better management, lower expenses, and higher rents. So what's the future stabilized net operating income? Number seven, what's the future stabilized cap rate? Now, the future cap rate, if we're looking to refinance, if we're looking to keep the building and refinance, that cap rate is gonna be given to us through comps, it's gonna be given to us by a bank through an appraisal. So the stabilized cap rate, there's two ways to look at it. There's your stabilized cap rate, which is your all-in number divided into your future stabilized net operating income. Okay, that's the 
your all in number, let's say it's 10 million, divided into your net operating income in the future, um, let's say it's $800,000, okay, that's gonna give you a cap rate, all right? That's a big number that we wanna know. Then the second cap rate is what is the bank gonna say, listen, you're gonna be able to refinance this, and let's say your stabilized cap rate is an eight or a nine, but you're gonna be able to refinance it at a six and a half or a six cap. That means that you're gonna be able to get a higher value than what you're all into it for. So what is the stabilized cap rate of your actual building and then what's the bank's cap rate that they're gonna refinance you at? That's number seven. Number eight is what's the stabilized value? Again, that value is gonna be determined by net operating income divided by your cap rate let's say 0.06 or 0.065, that's gonna give you a future stabilized value. That's number eight. Number nine, how many total units? Number 10, is this an A, B, or C market? And number 11, is this an A, B, or C asset? That's it, those 11, okay? Purchase price, rehab, all in number, current net operating income, current cap rate, stabilized net operating income, stabilized cap rate, of the deal and the stabilized cap rate that the bank may assign the deal on a refi. Number eight, stabilized value. Number nine, number of units. Number 10, A, B, or C market. And number 11, A, B, or C asset. Okay? So let me just expand on these a little bit more. Just take an extra minute here. Purchase price, self-explanatory. What's the, what do you think you're gonna buy it for? Number two, rehab, self-explanatory. How much improvements do you think you need? And also, it's always nice to know how, what are the improvements per unit. So on the lower end, $2,000 or $3,000 of improvements per unit is very low. Ten dollars to $12,000 of improvements per unit is very high. So I can know right away if it's $5,000 of improvements per unit, that's sort of a middle range between five and seven thousand. It's a middle range rehab. If it's only two grand per unit, that's very light. I know I'm gonna be able to get in and out of it. If it's $12,000, it's a very heavy rehab, okay? So whether it's two grand, five to seven grand, or 10 to 12 grand, that matters, right? As far as total rehab and total rehab per unit. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Number three, your all-in number. <clears throat> Again, purchase price, rehab, and soft costs, self-explanatory. Current net operating income, which is basically off of the current financials. What's the gross, what's the uh, expenses, and then what's the current net operating income? Now, you're gonna find that when you look at a, a pro forma, or you look at financials from a seller, you're gonna find that they're going to kind of fudge the numbers a little bit, and they're gonna say, hey, our our current pro forma is this, but in all actuality, you know, our current pro forma, let's say, is 97% occupancy. But in all actuality, we have 85% occupancy. But our effective occupancy, our collectible occupancy, is maybe 65% because a bunch of people in the building are not paying their rent. Okay, so we're gonna have to kick them out. So make sure you look at the last three months and last 12 months of operating statements so that you can actually verify and find who's paying and who's not. Okay, number five, the current cap rate. Again, is the current net operating income divided by your all-in price, pretty self-explanatory. Then number six, your stabilized net operating income. <clears throat> this is where your due diligence is gonna come in. This is where you and your lender and your operating team is, and your contractor is gonna look at, okay, what is it gonna cost us to run this building? A good rule of thumb is an expense ratio somewhere between 45 to 50%. Okay, 45 to 50%. On a larger building, 45 to 50%. Taxes, insurance, maintenance, you know, general uh, reserves, uh, insurance, utilities, common spaces, landscaping, all the you know regular expenses and utilities, about 45 to 50% of your gross operating income. So your net operating income is gonna be about 50 to 55% of your gross. 
Number seven, stabilized cap rate. Again, if, <clears throat> if, I, if I grab my calculator and I said, look, uh, on this building, it's a 20, $21 million building. I'm going to be all in for $15 million, and it's going to generate, let's say, $800,000 of net operating income. Okay. Um, let's say 800000 divided by... Fifteen million. Okay, five point three percent. Okay, very low. But if I was able to generate eight hundred thousand dollars of net operating income, and I'm only into the building for thirteen million, right? 6.15. So really important to understand your stabilized cap rates, um, which is basically, again, net operating income after expenses divided into your all-in price. Okay? Again, if you had a $10 million building and you wanted to get an 8% return on your $10 million investment, that's $800,000. Okay? So if I was generating $800,000 of net operating income, okay, and I invested $10 million in the building, that's an eight cap. That's an eight cap. But the bank might say, well, we're going to value this at a six cap. So you take your $800,000, divide by 0 0.06, and that gives the building a $13.3 million valuation, okay? So if you're able to get $900,000 of net operating income and you're all into the building for $10 million, that's a stabilized nine cap, okay? Which means your future stabilized net operating income of $900,000 divided into your all-in number of $10 million, that's a nine cap. The beautiful thing about it, you take the $900,000 divided by 0 0.06, which is what the bank's cap rate is, the bank's comp for value puts it at $15 million, means you're all in for $10 million, it's worth $15 million. You've just created $5 million of equity or profit. Okay, number of units, again, is important. The unit mix. Uh, how many one bedrooms, how many two bedrooms, how many three bedrooms, and what's the current rent rate? There's a lot of different tools out there, including Rentameter, CoStar, and a bunch of others where you can get really good comps. We use a program called CoStar. We spend a couple thousand dollars per month using CoStar in order to run comps because not only are we an investor in multifamily, but we're also an operator and we're also a lender. And then again, is it an A, B, or C market? Okay, A being obviously inner city, really high end, really nice area, you know, uh, really expensive, incomes are high, buildings are nice, A market, is it a B market? In our area, B market would be like Parma, Berea, Brunswick, areas outside the, the, the urban downtown and areas where, you know, incomes are a little bit lower, uh, a mixture of blue collar and white collar, not a lot of crime, but a little bit more riffraff. And then a C market is there's a lot of riffraff, a lot of crime, incomes are very low, A, B, and C market. Then you have an A, B, or C asset. So you can be in an A market, like let's say, you know, certain communities outside of Dallas or certain communities outside of Oklahoma City, Chicago, A market, but have a C asset, okay? Meaning maybe the way it was built. Like for example, I looked at a building about two, three weeks ago. It was in an A market, but it was a C asset. It was in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, which is a good market. It's right near you know, uh, Kent State University, Akron University, Summit County, downtown Akron, Canton. But the asset was, it was, it was a C asset. It was a C property because it was built as wartime housing for people that were working in manufacturing companies in Akron and Canton. So they were all kind of moving into the area to work in the rubber factories and the plastic factories in order to create product for the war. So people didn't have luxurious apartments. They were basically just big rectangular boxes, kind of ugly, kind of boring. So it was a C-class asset in an A type of market, okay? So again, if you're looking to evaluate a multifamily deal, super quick, those are the 11 things that I look at, purchase price, rehab, all in, current NOI, current cap rate, stabilized NOI, stabilized cap rate, Stabilized bank comp cap rate, makes sense. Stabilized value, number of units, A, B, or C market, A, B, or C property. 
Those are the things we look at. If you've got a deal, let's partner, let's joint venture on it. And if you're gonna bring me a deal, those are the 11 questions I'm gonna ask you. If you bring a deal to my acquisitions manager, Tyler, if you bring a deal to us to lend on, or we need you to, you know, you need us to fund a deal for you, those are the 11 questions that we're gonna ask you. If you're joint venturing with a private uh, investor, those are the questions we're gonna ask you. Now, the one question I did not include, which is, again, one of the most important questions, And of course, I wanted to save this for last. It's actually number 12. Save this as a bonus question is what is the exit strategy? Okay. Many people pay retail for apartments. They syndicate. They plan on holding the apartments for five, seven, 10 years and then sell them. And they say, oh yeah, you're going to get a 22% internal rate of return. But the primary driver of that return is that the building needs to be sold in your banking on appreciation. You're banking on the building being sold, okay, in the future. I don't like that strategy. I prefer to buy something at a wholesale price, fix it up, refinance it, keep it for the long term, and so my investors know we're gonna refinance it and they're gonna stay in it long term with little or no money into it, okay? What is the exit strategy? That's bonus question number 12. You've been listening to Josh Cantwell and the Accelerated Investor Podcast. Leave a comment on our iTunes channel and let us know what you want to learn next or who you'd like Josh to interview. While you're there, give us a five-star rating and make sure to subscribe so you can be the first to hear new episodes. Follow Josh Cantwell and his companies, Strategic Real Estate Coach and Freeland Ventures on all social media platforms now and stay up to date on new training and investment opportunities to start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Apply for coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com.